Okay, so now that we've ran our experiments, we're going to talk a couple about a couple terms and variables before we actually derive these formulas. So the first thing we're going to talk about is velocity. Velocity is the speed of something. So we denote the velocity with v. Um, right here, this triangle symbol in front of it is delta. Delta means change in something. So the change in velocity is equal to the final velocity of something, the final speed, minus the initial speed. Um, in most textbooks, you'll see that it's a v minus v naught. v naught is that circle little degree symbol there. The next term we're going to talk about is displacement. In most textbooks, it's written as an s. For the simplicity of this video, we will do d. So, delta d, or change in displacement, is measured in final displacement minus initial displacement. Or, in most textbooks, s minus s naught. Our last term that we are going to talk about before we break down these equations is dv. dv just basically means average velocity. To find the average of something, you add it up and then divide it by how many terms you've added up. For average velocity, we are looking for the final velocity plus the initial velocity divided by 2, which can be written as 1 half times final velocity plus initial velocity, or final velocity plus initial velocity divided by 2. Either way. Now that we've talked about some variables and some terms, we're going to break down some concepts. First, we're going to talk about speed, velocity. Now to find the velocity, or average velocity of something, usually take the distance and divide it by time. So for instance, if we were to travel 4 feet in 2 seconds, we would be traveling at 2 feet per second. So that being said, our change in distance Our change in distance is divided by and this is going to be our average velocity. That's our first equation. We're going to cover five equations and with these five equations you'll be able to solve any kinematic first dimensional problem as long as your acceleration is constant. Um, using a sort of bookkeeping as my physics teacher would say. So I'm going to mark that as number one. Now let's talk about our definition for the second equation. Our second equation is going to be acceleration. Well what does acceleration mean? Acceleration means the change of velocity. So if we had a change of the velocity within a certain amount of time, it would be our acceleration. We'll denote acceleration with a small a. three other equations with these two equations. Okay, so now that we have these first two formulas, we're going to derive the rest of the formulas. So, I'm going to take this acceleration and I'm going to break down delta V. So, delta V is now V F minus V I over T. Now, with a little algebra, we are going to manipulate this to get V on the other side. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to manipulate this and get VF alone. So, inverse operations, algebra tells us that we can multiply this T to this side to get AT equals VF minus VI. Then, inverse operations to get VI, over here we got VI plus And to rewrite this all, you have B F equals 
V I plus A, and we're gonna write the change in time to be more accurate. This right here is our third formula. Okay, now as you can see here, we have these three formulas. These are three over five kinematic formulas. We're gonna use these two formulas to try to figure out one more. So, right here we have average velocity is one half times final velocity plus initial velocity. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna substitute VF with this VF formula. So all of this red is gonna go right there. So, put in red for simplicity. All right, as you can see, I took VF and I substituted what VF equals right there. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna break down delta D into this form right here. So we broke this down into this by substituting that into there. Okay, now, as you can see, we have V, dv and dv right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this over here. Very simple. I just basically substitute this with that. So you have that on the left and you have all of this on the right. So, next we're going to simplify this part right here. Alright, so, the bracket drops and the VI gets added with VI. So you get 2VI plus acceleration times delta T times 1 half. We simplify that to that, and now we're going to distribute the 1 half. So one half times two is just one. So we get VI plus one half times that is one half acceleration times delta T. Okay, now on this side, we still have everything over here. EF minus VI over T. We wanna isolate position because we're solving for position for our fourth kinematics formula. So you're going to multiply delta t to both sides. So delta t gets multiplied to vi. So vi delta t plus delta t gets multiplied to this term over here. And you get one half acceleration times delta t squared. And that all equals your change in position. Now, if you started at a different position, you would just add that to this side. But, most textbooks write it as this. Or change in position equals our initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration times delta t squared or the change in time squared. And this is our fourth kinematic equation. That's just written in another way if you were to start in another position, but most positions we start at zero. But just in case you didn't, it would be this. But you could also use this to figure out the distance that you tra travel. So 
now we're going to figure out the fifth formula. So now we have four of the five kinematic formulas written. And we will be finding the fifth one by taking formula two, rearranging it in formula four, and substituting wherever we see T for how we rearrange formula two. So we expanded velocity, delta velocity into what we know as final velocity minus initial velocity. So acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity over delta T. Then we multiply delta T to both sides, which gave us acceleration times delta T equals final velocity minus initial velocity. And then we divided acceleration to both sides. We got delta T equals final velocity minus initial velocity over acceleration. So now, wherever we see a T in this position, displacement formula, we will substitute this in. So, delta D, or change in displacement, equals initial velocity times final velocity minus initial velocity over acceleration plus one half acceleration times final velocity minus initial velocity over acceleration squared. And such. So now we're going to simplify this. So we're going to go ahead and simplify this by basically multiplying this out. When you multiply two fractions straight across, um, you can, or two, two fractions, you can multiply straight across, except for this top part. This top part we will need to FOIL. FOIL, um, I'll do a video on this, uh, so please watch my FOIL video if you do not know how to FOIL a binomial. So, first, the first two terms are multiplied, VF squared. The outer term is multiplied, so you get minus VF VI. The inner term is multiplied, so you get minus VF VI again. And the last term is multiplied, which is just VI squared, all over A squared. Now we can add the rest onto this. Um, and as well as combine like terms, which I will get there. All right, so in dividing variables, this term would go to each one of these, as well as these two terms right here would also combine because they are like terms. So, to simplify this, we have a squared A on the bottom and a singular A in every term up there. We can just knock this down a power, combine the like terms, and we get VF squared minus 2VFVI plus VI squared over A times 1 half. Well, times 1 half is just multiplying straight across, one times everything is just one, two times a is two a at the bottom. And we're also gonna distribute this right here. So vi gets distributed to this and to that. So you get vf vi plus vi squared. minus v i squared. Positive times negative is a negative. v i squared goes to the second power all over a. Adding those. Okay. And delta d. Now I will erase this top part and I will move this up 
we will finish simplifying. Here's another look at it again. Now I've taken everything and put it towards the top and now we are going to create like terms so that we can get rid of these complicated fractions. So in fractions to convert, whatever you multiply the top by, you got to multiply the bottom. So over here, we need to multiply both the top and bottom by 2a. That will give us our 2a, our greatest common denominator. And over here, we need to multiply this by 1 half, I mean, 2 over 2. We need to multiply it by 2. All right, so over here we get 2a delta d over 2a. Over here we get 2v f v i minus 2v i squared over 2a. And then the last part stays the same. Now we can get rid of all these two a's. All right, we are left with, we're getting extremely close to solving forward position and velocity. Okay, that's what this simplifies to. Now we can combine like terms. I'm gonna use a different marker so that see what we're doing here. Okay, this is the same as this. This is just the negative version of it. So these cancel out. Okay, then we have a positive vf squared, a positive vi squared, and we have a negative 2vi squared. So this term right here is the only one that isn't alike any of the other terms. So we're going to leave that one alone. For these, we're going to cancel this out. Okay, and we're going to simplify these two. So we are left with I'm going to write this in blue. All right. I carried this down right here. I combined these two negative vi squared and one positive vi squared. It leaves you with one negative vi squared. And I carried this out right here. It doesn't matter which one's on the side of the equation symbol as long as you know that they're equal to each other. So we want to isolate vf squared. So how do we do that? We add vi squared to each side, which gives us our drum roll and our final product of squared equals. This is our fifth formula for our kinematics. Probably the most difficult one to solve for. But we now have our five formulas. Now, why is it important to have so many different formulas? Well, let's say in a problem we weren't giving all the terms. We didn't know all the variables. In order to solve for a different variable, we may need to use a different formula. But with these five formulas, you can figure out these five things final velocity, initial velocity, and change in time.
or change in position. And our acceleration. A rule of thumb though, is if you're ever given a problem, most likely you will need three of these and you can solve for the other two every single time. Um, in some rare cases you may only have two of these and you can solve for one as you can see in these two formulas. But most likely if you're given a problem which will run the experiment and show um, how to figure out all the terms uh, using these equations and what, we're, what we know. All right.